Hands down, the most requested video I get right now is for a what's in the bag and my stock yardages. So that's what we're gonna do today. And for anyone that's been following the channel, I'm a one handicap golfer. I'm in my late 30s, family, busy. And the whole thing that I'm trying to do with this channel is what can I do to improve and what can I do to get the most out of my game in the shortest amount of time. Okay, so first things first, the key training aids or gadgets that I rely on when I'm playing golf. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I'm a big believer in the super speed sticks. And these things I started using probably about six months ago. So what I'm gonna do at the end when I do my stock yardages, I'll definitely put in the yardages that I'm hitting now. And I'll also make a note of the yardages before I start the super speed training. So you can see the difference. You can see what's changed over the time that I've been using them. Something that I discovered as well whilst I was doing the super speed training was these, the force pedals. These are something that I keep in the bag. Don't use them all the time, but I find that if I'm ever struggling with my weight transfer, or the way that I feel like I'm using the ground. A couple of sessions with these sort me right out and gives me a really good swing thought for when I'm playing golf. Next up, you've got the Golf Buddy Voice. This is something that I've had in my bag for years. This is super simple, just clips onto the trolley and it only gives you distances to the front of the green, the middle of the green and the back of the green, nothing else. What I see with other golfers is that they'll be fixating on a couple of yards here and there and the reality is we don't hit it that consistently. So for me, this is perfect. Also in the bag is the PRGR launch monitor. This was the first launch monitor I got when I started speed training. And again, videos on my channel, so I don't need to go too much into it. But if you're doing speed training or you're interested in some basic club head speed and distance ideas, this is a great device for that. And then we've got the Flightscope Mevo Plus, and that's what I've used today to get my stock yardages. But this is a great device. I think this is an entry level price when it comes to personal launch monitors but it gives you so much information and really makes those sessions that you do here at home at the net on the driving range so much more valuable than they would otherwise be. This complements the big net return that I've got behind. This is for me, perfect garden setup. Next up, we've got the golf ball. And for me, I use the Vice Pro. Originally, I always played the Pro V1, played it for years and then took that break from golf. And when I took the break, my dad basically sent me a dozen of these and when I came back to playing and wasn't sure how good I'd be playing if I lose a lot of golf balls, I thought I'd stick with them and have a go. And I've never really been able to tell you the difference between this and another premium golf balls. And at the time, they were, I think, even better value than they are now. You used to be able to buy them online. You'd save quite a bit of money and obviously the more that you bought, the, the cheaper it would be. I think that's still the case but I do think that their individual boxes have gone up in price, I believe. Either way, I've stuck with them. Really like them, Vice Pro, good golf ball. Honestly, couldn't tell you the difference between this and any of the other premium golf balls. The tee that I use is the Tour Tee, and if you go back on my channel, a couple of videos, you'll see that I did a review on them. They make some pretty big claims as to what they're meant to do in terms of extra distance and durability. You can make your own mind up on that. I do find that they go a tiny bit further but regardless of that, I just think it's a good tee to use. It doesn't break and it tends to stay in the ground, tends to be easy to find. So when it comes to the golf bag, I'll start with the wedges. And I've got a 54 degree and a 60 degree. Both of them are the Ping Glide 3.0s. They're both black dot. The 54 degree has 12 degree of bounce and the 60 has 10 of bounce. Normal ping grips, these are a bit longer than other brands make them and they've got ping nip on stiff shafts. If you watch my videos, you'll notice that I use the 54 degree a lot. I love this club, really versatile. You can open it up and hit really nice high flop shots with it. You can keep the face closed like normal and hit nice bump and runs, you get check. It's great around the greens, it's great in the wet. It does everything that you would want from a wedge. So big fan of that, that's the one I use mostly. I do have a 60 degree, I don't tend to use it too much. For me, I have a theory that because I don't have much time to practice, I'm better off being as good as I can with one wedge as opposed to just being average with both. For the irons, I then have Ping i500s and I love these golf clubs. So I used to play more of a player's iron and then when I got back into playing golf, I just found that when you hit them great, great clubs to use, but anything off center and tend to hit a lot of those, they don't go so good. I tried the i500s, I really like the head. It's got that sort of blade type look about it. I think they're considered a player's distance iron and I've just found that since I've been using these you can hit the good shots and they're great like anything they go further than the old clubs that I had but then when you hit them off center you'll get away with a lot more than I did with the clubs I had before this so you can hit some pretty average shots and still find the green 
And I think at the end of the day, most average golfers, that's sort of what we're looking for. And so I really found that ever since I've had the Ping i 500s, they've helped my game improve a lot. In terms of which clubs I've got, I've got the U-Wedge through to a four iron with the shafts, the Dynamic Gold S300s, stiff shafts, and they're 105 in terms of weight. That's actually something that I'm looking into at the moment. So I have been into Ping to look at different irons, uh, different shafts rather. I've found that since I added a little bit of swing speed through the super speed training, it has impacted the, the clubs a little bit and I'm looking at possibly moving to a slightly heavier stiff shaft. Heading to the top end of the bag and I've just changed that literally this week. And before, if you'd seen my videos playing golf courses a couple of months ago, you might have noticed that I had a driver and a four wood. What I was, it was the, a five wood head on a three wood shaft pulled forward a lot. So it played more like a four wood and it was because when I was getting fitted, it was about if you didn't have the swing speed, three wood might not actually suit everyone. And so that bit of extra loft helped. Again, once I found that I was hitting it a little bit better, I feel like there was more of a space to put the three wood in. So what I've done is I've got the five wood. It's the G425 Max from Ping. It's 17 and a half degrees. And I've gone back to a standard five wood shaft in it. As I said, this week, my three woods come into stock. So I've literally testing it today to get my yardages. It's the first time that I've used it. Again, sticking with the Ping family. So it's the G425 Max again. Three wood in 14 and a half degrees. And like the five wood, I've got it set to neutral. Shaft is the same with all of the, the woods that I've got. The five wood, the driver and the three wood. It's the Ping Tour shaft. 65 grams in a stiff shaft. The driver that I play, the Ping G425, so it's the same that I've got for the three wood, the five wood and the driver. It's in the max and it's a 10 and a half degree, set a little bit open. I just like to see that slight left to right ball flight. Again, all of the shafts that I've got are now the Ping Tour 65 grams stiff shafts. That's something that I've only just gone to. So if you're actually watching the videos and it would be when I was playing the ridge, you'll notice that I started to get this quite high fadey ball flight. And I'm happy to think that some of it is technique, but I do know that some of it came and I speeded up my swing. So when I got fitted for these, I had a fairly slow swing speed. I've added some speed since doing the speed six training and I felt like that was just causing me to hit this sort of spinny high right sort of shot. So I went back and had the shafts looked at and that's what they found. Originally in all of the woods, I had the Tensai 65 gram stiff flex. That's what I've switched out on all of the woods gone to the Ping Tour. And I just find that it's just suiting me that little bit better. And I'm already starting to see that it's getting me that different shot. So it's a little bit less spinny, a little bit less loopy to the right. To go alongside that, I also moved the weight on the back from being in neutral to in a draw position. And straight away, these two changes have helped. Same swings from me, now hitting it much straighter, seeing a much more of the ball flight that I want to see, less spinny and less loopy. Then you might notice that I've got another club. I know I've got too many clubs here, so I'm not gonna take them all out on the golf course. But I do also have this Adams Idea Pro A12 18 degree hybrid. This is a club I couldn't even tell you where I got this from. I'm pretty sure I borrowed it from someone. I've got no idea who it was. So if you ever see this video and it's your club, I'm really sorry. I'm going to do it with your back. It's a Matrix Ozic shafted golf club. I tend to find that it's quite easy to hit and has a low ball flight. So when I was doing the testing, I get really similar distances between this hybrid and my now five wood. But what I do see is that the five wood obviously goes very high and the hybrid comes out much lower. So like when I was playing the coast the other week, Lynx course, I went to the hybrid quite a lot because it just has that lower ball flight. So into the wind, tight fairways, I tend to think it's a good option there. Whereas the five wood would balloon. If it was a stiller day or there was more carries, like if you were needing to hit higher shots into greens, I might go for the five wood. Finally, we've got the putter. And the putter that I use is the original Odyssey two ball white hot. Now this, came, this is the original, original. It came out years and years ago when I first played golf. I got it had it in the bag, always putted well with it, and tend to just come back to it. Occasionally switch out and try a different putter. If you've seen my videos, I tend to go pretty well with it, and I'm very comfortable looking down at it. I put the black line on the top of the putter. I help find it helps with alignment. And I've gone through a few different grips over the years, but right now I've got this Reflex Tour. Big fan of the thicker grips. I put reverse-handed anyway. I, I just think feel that the thicker grips just sit better. 
I think it takes some of the movement out, or at least that's what I feel in the club face and lets you just be more set. And this is just an old faithful. When it comes to distances, I've been using my setup, which is the Flightscope Mevo Plus into the net return. What I'll do is I'll give you the distances that I've seen today as the averages. And I'll also mention at the end the distances before I started super speed training, just so you can see how my game has changed in the last few months because of that training. When we come to the wedges, and I've got, like I said, I've got the 60 degree and the 54 degree. I'm not gonna give you a distance for the 60 degree because I just never hit full shots with it. And when it comes to the 54, I rarely go full at it with a 54. I like the versatility of it. I've got, tend to have a three quarter swing, a fuller swing and different distances here to try and get different distances. The furthest I would ever look to hit the 54 degree though is 90 yards. That's my fuller swing with it. I do also have a quite stock comfortable 75 foot yard shot and one for more around 50. The pitching wedge, measuring that and again getting the averages. The average carry distance that I was seeing in the garden was 116 yards. And with all of these distances, I'm gonna give you the terms of the carry distance. I could give you the total distance as well, but I tend to think the carry is more relevant. With the nine iron, I'm getting an average carry distance of 135 yards. My eight iron, average carry distance, 150 yards. Seven iron at the moment, I'm seeing 162 yards. My six iron is 173 yards. And it's at this top end of the bag in the irons where the distances aren't that great between them. So that's something I might need to look at. With the five iron, I'm currently hitting it 180 yards carry on average. Four iron average carry distance, 191 yards. The utility club that I mentioned before, the Adams, that's getting me 198 yards of carry on average. That's pretty accurate. That's what I, one of the clubs I actually had right in my head. I see as a 200 yard shot, and that's what I'm seeing in the net. When we get to the five wood, I've only just gone back to a conventional five wood. So this is something that I actually was really curious to see what the distance would be. And the average carry that I was seeing was 202 yards. Very similar, like I mentioned before, to the hybrid, but the five wood, very high hybrid much lower. So it just gives you those alternatives when you're on a course or you're looking at the type of course that you're gonna be playing. The three wood was gonna be new. First time I've hit the three wood is this, these shots in the net. So I've really not got a lot to compare it to. The average carry distance that I was seeing was 220 yards. It's kind of about where I would want it to be, plus a little bit of roll, maybe it's a 230, 235 total. That's the sort of the gap that I had in my bag that I wanted to fill. So I hope it'll be that, but I've not used it on the course yet to see. And in terms of the driver in the net, like I say, I was seeing an average carry distance of 256 yards. See it on the golf course, that feels probably about right. I would have said I've got more in the tank on the course to get it out there. But averages is averages, that's probably about right. So you'll see here the distances that I'm hitting now as my stock yardages what they were six months ago before the super speed training and then what I've increased it. It's really interesting to be able to go back and see it. So if you ever do go and do that type of training, I really recommend grabbing your yardages at the start. Look, I hope this has been relevant for you. I hope it's interesting and adds some more context to the future videos. If you've got any questions about the products I use or the distances or the clubs, anything like that, feel free to jump in the comments. Really appreciated all of the requests for this video and everyone that's been watching everything so far. And I'll see you soon.